see me sitting here in front of this webcam, what direction am I facing it? North, south, east, west, whatever. Well, <laughs> you don't have any way of knowing that because you don't have enough information to determine that. And in point of fact, I, depending on where I am standing on Earth, it's impossible for me to be looking any direction other than north. In other words, if I'm on exactly on the south pole, I have to be looking north somehow. Or if I'm on the north pole, the reverse. You could also say, well, okay, I'm looking forward. All right, what, what direction is forward? Or what direction am I looking in now? Well, you can say that I'm looking to my right. All right, well, what direction is right? <laughs> um, that's pretty obvious, the examples here. Or go out into space and then head north. <laughs> you can't. You need a fixed point to gauge the direction you're going in. Um, and there are no fixed points except for those that we arbitrarily grab out of nothingness or that we use just some sort of artifact like the Earth to, to measure or to start from. Um, so <clears throat> that's just a very small, very obvious example of the fact that we don't really, we don't have any absolutes to deal with. Although, again, we're using things like directions simply as um, tools to help us measure what's, go what's going on around us. It doesn't really matter that left doesn't phenomenally exist. It's a very useful concept. But again, we have to be careful. Just because left is useful doesn't mean that left phenomenally exists, or north, or south, or any of you know the directions, up or down. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, there are... Um, we, we can refine this a little bit further. Um, let's say, I'm guzzling my morning nine cups of coffee. Well, not nine, but a lot. Uh, what's this? It's a spoon. Okay, well, says who? All right, you show this to a clove from Ar Arcturus, this planet somewhere else, and another star, and he won't know what it is because his uh, physiology is presumably completely different from ours, so he hasn't got a clue. I studied some ar archaeology in university, and of course what a clove would probably say was, well, this probably has some sort of religious significance, which is inevitably the title that you put on something or the... the the, um, the judgment that you place on something when you don't know what it is. You can't identify it. It probably had religious significance. <laughs> um, now, refine it a step further. Um, is this a good or a bad thing? Well, it's a good thing if you're going to use it to put food into your gizzard, um, but it's a, a bad thing if um, you're, I don't know, a recovering heroin addict, and this brings up nasty uh, associations of I don't know, Bunsen burners or candles and little bits of bubbling powder in it. Um, it uh, also brings up uh, bad associations if uh, you, like me, had an Irish mother who had a habit of whenever you decided to step out of line of going smack on the head with it, which tended to make me angry more than actually hurting. It hurt a lot, but it made me angry. So, okay, the, the, this, this thing isn't really neutral because you can put value on it. You can say that it's good, bad, or whatever, whereas to clove, it's, I don't know what it is. It's nothing. Uh, it's a lump of metal, you know. And, and again, we, we can um, reduce that further and say it's just a pile of matter, energy, and empty space. Um, that's the problem with value. It, you, again, you need a fixed point to assess value from. Um, you turn on uh, Discovery Channel and watch one of those delightful shows about uh, a predator uh, having a buffet off a wildebeest or uh, something like that. And uh, well, from the point of view of the wildebeest, it's pretty awful what's happening. It's uh, you know, he's he, I can forgive the wildebeest if he thinks hmm, this is pretty evil what's happening. But take the uh, I don't know what cheetah or whatever it is that's eating it, uh, or uh, gang of hyenas, and to them this is great, this is a buffet, this is what I do, me and my wife every Sunday or every weekend when we trundle off to the local casino and have all you can eat. Um, it's not a bad thing at all, in fact it, I can imagine, although I don't know, the uh, cheetah thinking, wow, this is, this is what life is all about, this is really good, this is, you know, I'm filling my belly and I just had a great workout chasing this thing down and now I'm eating it, you know, and whether or not it's still alive is more or less irrelevant to me because I don't look at it this way. I have needs and I have desires. The two aren't the same thing necessarily because not only do uh, does the, the cheetah 
fulfill a need, i.e. it needs nourishment, but it gets positive gain out of the act of eating, and as anyone will tell you after they've just had a very satisfying meal, it's more than just being satiated and more than just um, fulfilling a need when you lay on the couch afterwards and go, oh man, that's good, ah! As the French Canadians say, j'ai bien mangé, moi, j'ai bien mangé. You know, you just rub your belly and you say, I've eaten very well. And it's sort of a traditional compliment to the supposedly a woman that cooked this. You know, it's a well done wife or mother or mother in law or sister, daughter, whoever. It's, a, you know, traditionally you're supposed to be liberal with the compliments. And it's not that difficult when you've ever eaten French Canadian cuisine. It's awesome, yada yada. So eating isn't just um, meeting a need, it actually is good. Uh, could make a million videos on that, but what I'm trying to say is what value do we place on that? What value do we place on um, the, uh, the, the act of consuming something? Uh, as I say, uh, whatever you eat, you kill. <laughs> uh, as human beings, we have to eat plants, we have to eat animals, we have to eat all kinds of things, and in order for them to eat, we have to stop them from flourishing anymore. Okay, well, that's murder in a sense, I guess, yes. We thrive off death, don't we? Yes. But we live off death. Yeah? Okay, so <laughs> death is life. Um, is this good or bad? It depends on your point of view, doesn't it? Uh, there's no fixed value for this. We might want to place some fixed value on it, but it doesn't occur phenomenally, and you could take either side in it. Um, you go to McDonald's and you see a bunch of families eating uh, Sunday afternoon. You say, well, this is, you know, this might be very bourgeois and very last man-ish, but okay, well, it's a, it's a harmless pleasure that everybody has earned and uh, that, uh, you know, they bring the kiddies out to McDonald's and have some junk food, but it, it tastes good and it's not going to harm you much if you do it once a week or whatever. Or, if you're a militant vegetarian, you can say this is revolting, this disgusting place where people gluttonize themselves on food they, they don't need simply for their own sense gratification and there's factory firms backing all of this up. Take your pick. It's both and it's neither and it's everything. Value is subjective. It's relative. Um, I would say it depends on your point of view. It depends on your perspective. Um, and what value do you want to place on things? What do you want to see? That goes especially in the vein of the um, the uh, depressive realism that I'm speaking to. You you can place positive or negative value on anything. This vi this series of videos was initiated by a request from Andreas Moss, and one of my favorite authors is a Norwegian fellow, which he may or may not have read, called Knut Hemsen. He's certainly heard of him. Very controversial existential author. Um, and one of his best books, if you ask me, was a book called Hunger. It's about what it's like for a fallen middle-class Norwegian writer to walk around in the streets of Oslo, then called Christiania, starving. <laughs> he didn't have enough money to fill his belly, and he's selling little bits of clothing to get enough money to stay alive, and he's far too proud to do anything, and not to, he's not going to beg, he's, he's stubborn, he's extremely independent, and he's kind of angry at the world. Well, he's really hungry. And what does a really hungry person need? Well, he needs food, of course. So he suddenly comes into enough money to buy himself a nice meal. So he goes into a restaurant, and what does he order? He orders a big pile of roast beef. Well, he hasn't eaten properly in months, and he hasn't eaten in particular in this instance in about a week. So he stuffs the roast beef down his gullet, and he understands what he's doing is reckless because his body, obviously, I guess his digestive system or his stomach has shut down and his body has switched over to digesting fat if there's any left stored up in his system or uh, it's, you know, the body has started to digest his muscle or other live tissue. Um, so, of course, the roast beef comes right back up. <laughs> um, that roast beef is exactly what he needs because he's starving. He eats the roast beef. The roast beef causes his stomach upset, he vomits it up. He cannot overcome the sense of injustice and persecution at this. I'm trying to give my body what my body wants and my body is rejecting it and then it tortures me for more food after I've thrown up this perfectly good food. What the hell is going on in this universe? Um, 
is food good or bad? Is that plate of roast beef good or bad? Well, when he's starving, he that's that's it's the only thing he can think about. When he eats it, it it, it shocks his body to the point where his body has to reject it. Because, of course, he just ate the wrong stuff. He should have had something light, like, I don't know, raw fruit or something like that. Uh, but he goes right for the roast beef because that's what his body wants. Is that roast beef good or bad? Uh, again, from the point of view of militant vegetarianism, serves him right. Stupid carnivore. He should have, I don't know, eaten some grass or something. I don't know. Uh, or just uh, some bread. <clears throat> so, again, it all depends on your point of view. It's bad when somebody is starving. Uh, because, well, look at the deprived state that they're in. But then you try and give them what they want, and it doesn't agree with them, even though that's what their body is howling for. And the, 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 the existential and ethical and, and uh, uh, physiological, I guess, philosophical implications of this one little episode are enormous. And it, I read that book first when I was only about 20, and it stayed with me, in particular the roast beef part. Um, anything has positive or negative value in it. It just depends on your perspective. It depends on what point of view you're coming at the whole thing from. Um, you can criticize people for being moral nihilists or moral relativists all you like, but it doesn't alter the fact that under certain circumstances, anything is good and anything is bad.